Greetings from the Spectrum here in Logan as the Aggies look to remain undefeated in the early stretch of the season at 3-0. And they welcome in, believe it or not, a familiar foe. It doesn't seem like in recent history Utah State and Denver have played a lot. However, this is the fourth longest rivalry in Utah State history. This is the 92nd time these two teams have played against each other. Yeah, that's crazy. I think for this, you know, the modern era, uh, we may not recognize that, but this is a rivalry game nonetheless. So with the Aggies coming in at 2-0 and after one of the more impressive games that we've seen in recent history, Utah State with their blowout victory over Weber State look to continue the momentum coming up today against Denver. Starting lineups, let's start with the Denver Pioneers. Uday Murky, number zero, six foot five, senior, gets a start averaging 13 points a game. David Naze Casey coming in at six foot nine. He's a sophomore. Number three, Jace Townsend, six foot three, uh, six foot three, sophomore, averaging 12 and a half points a game. Taylor Gatlin, six foot three, sophomore. He's averaging 7.5 points a game. And Alperin Kernaz, Kernaz, excuse me, six foot eight, sophomore will also get the snart for the Pioneers. Your Aggie starting lineup remains the same. Sam Merrill, Abel Porter, Brock Miller, Justin Bean, and Kuba Karbovsky. And we're ready to get this thing going. Before we get started, let's pause 10 seconds for local stations to identify themselves. Aggie Hoops from Learfield IMG College. Student section is filled in nicely. Maybe the uh, Tuesday game has thrown the rest of the Cash Valley in for a little bit of a loop. It's a late arriving crowd, Coach. Yeah, this is a Laker crowd as we refer to them, <laughs> Laker crowd. Yeah. So the I Believe chant going on in the background and we're ready to get this thing started. Kuboski's gonna start off and he will take on Enza Kwesi. Here comes your tip off. And controlled by Abel Porter in Utah State. Kuba Karbovsky is able on the second bounce to swing it over to him. Brock Miller up top to Sam Merrill. Sam Merrill guarded closely. Comes around a Karbovsky screen. Swings it cross court to Brock Miller. Long three. No good. And the rebound. Fought for. Tipped around. And contact out on the court. Let's see what they call it. It's going to stay with Utah State. Number four. That's Taylor Gatlin. Picks up the foul. Yeah, great action by the Aggies. Uh, Kuba, he's just a, he's an excellent screener. Yes. Um, and, and just get a wide open look there for Brock because of a nice back screen to start to play. Abel Porter bouncing the ball, swings it cross court over to Miller. He'll take another three from the same spot. <laughs> that one will go down. That's the same play without the back screen. I mean, that's a brilliant call by Coach Smith. If it doesn't go down at first, try it again. And sure enough, it drops. Gatlin with the ball up top left wing. Swings it up to Enzaquezi. Into lane. Shot up. Got it to go. And what a big play from David Enzaquezi. I'd like to see Kuba, you know, man, man up a little. Muscle, muscle up, I think, is probably a better term. Kind of muscle up there and block that shot as opposed to just having two hands high. Enzaquezi will get himself a, couple, or a free throw. Try to complete the old-fashioned three-point play. Tie this game up. It'd be an interesting matchup. Not as tall, but he's got a little bit more uh, girth. Big mamba jam out there, to say the least. So we're all square at three apiece after Enzaquez. He's able to knock down the free throw. Justin Bean with the ball. Swings it over to Sam Merrill. Sam swinging back to the right. Cross court to Abel Porter. He'll drive baseline and get fouled on the drive before the shot. And Utah State will inbound as the Pioneers pick up a foul. Roscoe Eastman's going to check in. Only five foot nine freshman. He's already in spell number four, Taylor Gatlin, for the Pioneers. Looks like Gatlin may have caught a little uh, inadvertent elbow or something to the ribs there in that collision with uh, Brock. Karbovsky hands back over to Sam Merrill outside the three-point line on the right wing. Back up top to Miller, who just hit a three. He'll rise from inside the three-point line and knock that shot down. So right now it's Brock Miller five, Denver three. Here on the Spectrum in Logan is the Aggies. Lead by two with 18.44 left to go here in the first half. Townsend working left. Then finally dishing up top to Murky. Murky back to Townsend on the right wing. Hands over to Roscoe Aceman. 
Back at the ends of Quasi, thinks about a three, then decides against it wisely. Townsend trying to get Sam Merrill on a string. Shot blocked away as he attacks the rim, and Justin Bean with the block. Because, of course, he does. Bean on the left wing, thinks about driving, swings it back to Sam Merrill for three. Yes! Sam Merrill and the Aggies lead 8-3. 18.08 left to go. Ends a quasi with the entry pass. Goes off his hands out of bounds, and the, and the turnover gives it back to Utah State. Yeah, this is definitely the pace that Denver doesn't want to play, and they don't want to get the Aggies into. So great start by the Aggies right along with the scouting report. Abel Porter bringing the ball down the court. Eastman's in his back pocket. Abel, who's been averaging nearly five assists a game, gets in the lane, right-hand scoop shot up and in. No assist needed there when you can drive the lane and lay it up and in. And the Aggies rolling here early. 10 to 3, 17, 53 left to go here in the first half. Coach's timeout. We'll take a 30 second break here on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Here inbounding. Finally swing it up top to Townsend. Townsend on the left wing. Drive on the baseline. Blocked away by Bean as number 12, Kernaz, tried to get it down into the rim. Swing it left. Brock Miller, another three. No. He's one for three from that exact same spot. Rebound pulled down by Townsend. Here comes the Pioneers moving left to right. Townsend. Swing it back up top to Kernaz. And then swing it left wing for a long three-point shot attempt. Missed by Kernaz. And an ugly three to say the least, Coach. Yeah, I mean, he didn't even draw iron. Merrill to Abel Porter on the left wing. Porter tries to drive. Tripped up, and they'll call a foul. Kernaz is going to pick up the foul. Trevin Dory is set to check in, as well as Diogo Brito. Have you not been impressed with, with Abel Porter's ability yes. to drive the basketball? That was non-existent last year. We talked to him about on the post game. He said he definitely worked on it all season long with the coaching staff, and it shows. So Abel Porter will trigger the inbound underneath the bucket. 22 seconds on the shot clock. 17.06 left in the first half. Aggies up by the count of 10 to 3. Merrill on the right wing. Murky's right in his back pocket, so he swings it to Bean. Bean attacks the rim wow. with the right hand. Won't go, but Bean's able to pull down his own rebound. Swing it back over to Porter. Porter for three straight away. No good. Dorius pulls down the rebound, brings it down, and the ball's ripped out of his hands. Murky comes away with it. Jump ball will go back to Denver. Junior Jazz training tip. Right, keep the ball up. <laughs> for all you kids out there, don't bring the ball down. If you are seven foot, do not dribble in the lane. Um, <laughs> yeah, but he brings so much to the game, right? Yep. Coming off the bench, he's a big body bruiser. He can make moves back with his back to the basket. I, I, I really like uh, what we see out of him so far this year. Tristan Green, number 22, checking into the game. He holds the ball outside the three-point line. Swings over to Eastman. Eastman trying to drive in the... Trees loses the ball, goes out of bounds. So I can say it off of Sam. It'll stay with the Pioneers of Denver as the Aggies lead this game 10 3. 16 41 left to go here in the first half. Townsend set to trigger the inbound. Gets it up top to Murky. Murky into the lane, right hand shot off the glass, gets it to go. Not sure if he called. Merrill back to Brito, thinks about a three, then cuts off his drive, swings it to Porter, back to Merrill. Merrill drives baseline, swings it all the way over to Brito. Wide open baseline three. Yes, sir. Diogo Brito. Two ball reversals, about 18 passes, wide open three. 13 to five. The Aggies lead by eight. Their largest lead in this game. Tristan Green with the handle down low. Going to work is number 21, Robert Jones. Swings it back up top to Townsend. Wide open three. Rattles out, won't go. Nice box out by Justin Bean, and he collects the rebound. Abel Porter. Porter on the right wing. Down low to Bean. Bean holds, lays it up and in. That's a patient shot right there, Coach. Wow, great back cut, first of all. Good job finding him. 
and then just to hold your water and let everyone fly by and you get an open layup. First double digit lead for the Aggies. 15 to five, 10 point lead with 15.29 left to go here in the first half. Robert Jones with the ball outside the three point line. So he gets it back over to Eastman on the left wing to Townsend. Townsend works right. Townsend double teamed. Diogo Brito continues to apply the pressure. Three. Back up top to Eastman. Two seconds, one second, long three-point shot missed. Brito with the easy rebound. Over to Merrill, Aggies want to run. Back to Brito, straight away three. Yes! Diogo Brito buries the three. Aggies up 13, 18 to five. Uh, Showtime Lakers? Yeah. <laughs> Late arriving crowd? Aggies putting on a show today. <laughs> Townsend over to Eastman, Eastman on the right wing. Still working the hit dribble. Nice touch pass in the lane. Collected and blocked away by Dorius. He'll have none of that. Robert Jones tried to tack with the right hand layup, and Dorius sent it into the third row. Timeout on the court. Aggies up by 13, 18 to 5, 14 40 left to go in the first half. You're listening to Aggie basketball from Learfield IMG College. Uh, of probably a top 15 um, vote soon. I mean, they are they are playing so well. There's just no answers. There's just uh, no answers. And then when you're a really, really good team, uh, this is the way it looks. 18-5 to five the score. Utah State leading by 13. 14-40 left to go here in the first half. Aggies have gotten five from Brock Miller, six from Diogo Brito on a couple threes. Inbound. Swing on the right side. Number 10, Joseph Lounsey into the game. He puts a really contested shot, tries to kiss it off the glass, won't go. Anderson with the rebound. Quickly down court, Brito attacks, draws the foul. He'll go to the free throw line. Aggies have got lightning speed going down the court. What, They're going to give him free throws, right? There we go. Yep. It just took him a while to figure that out. But what do you think about that defense, right? Every shot's contested. Everything's down to the end of the shot clock. I yep. mean, this is, is a phenomenal defensive team so far this season, next two game, last two games. Burrito's first free throw is up and good. He's got seven points on the night. Looking for point number eight. Here comes the second free throw. It is up and it rattles home. And Utah State pushes the lead to 15, 20 to 5. 14, 24 left to go here in the first half. Eastman with the ball. Gets it over to Robert Jones, number 21 on the elbow. Swings it over to Murky, who takes the shot from the jumper from the free throw line and knocks it down, 20 to 7. That snaps an Aggie 10-0 run. Yeah, got washed away in the screen there and had an open look and have to switch. So that's a... Not great right there defensively. Merrill comes around the curl, back to Brito, who's had the hot hand tonight, back to Sam. Sam drives, kicks it low to Karbovsky, attacks the rim, can't get it to go. Rebound pulled down by Green. A tough break there. 
Down low, number 10, Lanzi trying to post up Jones. Jones against Karbowski. Karbowski blocks it away, and the foul is going to go against Denver. Nice job by the big man coming away and getting a block. Yeah, you know, he kind of misses the bunny on the other end, but hustles down and then ends up with a block shot. I mean, that's a great recovery. No, no time to hang your head in this yep. game. Take it. If you're frustrated, take it out on the defensive <laughs> side. And he sure did. He blocked that flat-footed. Alfonso Anderson inbounding. When you're 7-2, you get away with things like that sometimes. Well, I'll tell you what, he is a long, long feller. Merrill running the point. Hands over to Brito. Brito circles back to Brock Miller. Miller then dishes back over to Merrill. Merrill comes around a Karbovsky screen on the right wing. Swings across court to Brock Miller. Does not take that baseline three. He's attempted three of those so far already. But Miller outside the three-point line. Back to Merrill. Merrill on the left wing. Posting up Karbovsky. Karbovsky on the left low block. Back to Merrill for three. Yes. Sam. Corners, they haven't even hardly hit the bottom of the net. <laughs> Diogo Brito contesting the inbounds, knocks it out of bounds. Ball stays with the Pioneers. 23 to 7, our score, 13.09 left to go here in the first half. Aggies putting on a clinic tonight. Yeah, just just back to back performances so far to start the games, uh, two consecutive games. That tells a lot about a team. Taylor Gatlin swings it back over to. Uh, Nazay Kwesi, and Zekwesi has the ball on the left wing, swings over to Green, Green for three off the front of the iron, won't go. Merrill crossing the timeline to Brock Miller, quickly, three, no. But keeping it alive oh. is Karvovsky, who dishes back over to Diogo Brito. Over to Merrill, back to Brock, Brock then posting up Anderson. Anderson faces up against Green, puts his shoulder down, right hand shot, a little wild, wouldn't go, couldn't get the English to spin on him. Yeah, probably should have switched to the other hand there and get to the other side. 23 to 7. Gets it to Enzaquazi, and then a foul is going to be called on Utah State. And that's going to go against Karvovsky, his first. Dorius is going to check in. I think that's his second foul. Oh, one up early. you're right. Bearstow is going to check in as well. Yeah, you know, uh, the Aggies are eight deep, nine deep now. As Sean comes in the game and substitutions, and there's no drop-off, right? I mean, we didn't quite have that last year. There always seemed to be a little bit of drop-off, but not this year. Merrill with six. Burrito with eight. Your leading scores for the Aggies. And Zaquazi. And back over to Eastman. He'll try to drive. Gets caught up in traffic, and Anderson pulls away a bad pass. Left his feet, not knowing where to go with the ball. Bearstow back to Anderson. Anderson waits, then drives, kicks back over to Brito. Back to Anderson, who was wide open but didn't know it. Spins right, puts it up with the right hand, and lays it up and in. Yeah, that's uh, such a mismatch in the post. He's really just, uh, you know, made a wiser choice there on finishing that yeah. time. And it, it's nice to see he knows when he has the mismatch, too. Yeah, he's a, he's a very, very headsy player, very smart. On the left wing is Gatlin. Gatlin picked up by Bearstow, gets a screen from Enzaquazi. Back to Townsend outside the three-point line. Works it back left. Long shot is up and missed, and Brock Miller comes away with it. Aggies right now with 13 rebounds already in this game. Brock straightaway three, yeah. Early in the offense says, yeah, I got to roll it. Let's go. Yeah, you know, when he starts blowing hard with the basketball, you know a shot's going up. Boy, that was nothing but net there. Aggies now with a 20-plus lead, 21, 28-7. to 11-13 left to go first half. Oh. Pass intended for Green in the post. Green never saw it coming, and it goes out of bounds. He's looking at Enzaquazi. He said, I thought you were shooting it. Timeout um, on the field. <laughs> Timeout on the court. 28-7 our score, 11.09 left to go first half. You're listening to Aggie Basketball from Learfield IMG College.
AMG College, Utah State leading big, 28-7. Scott Gerard alongside Lance Becker. Time for your AFC Youth Student Athlete of the Week, Justin Bean. Yeah, that's right. Named the America First Credit Union Student Athlete of the Week against Weber State. Bean led Utah State to both scoring and rebounding after logging in a high 18 points and nine rebounds. Also a steal and an assist. America First Credit Union donates funds to help assist in student athlete scholarships and is a proud sponsor of Utah State Athletics and the Student Athlete of the Week. And tell you what, he had a sequence where he pulled down a nasty rebound, fell down, but still hustled down enough to trail the play, get the end one on the other end. Yeah, it was kind of the uh, the quintessential uh, Justin Bean play. And, I, you know, I saw it bouncing around social media, and it really did. We talked about it on the show, but, you know, what a, what a phenomenal effort. Um, he's always had rebounding effort, but, man, his scoring has really picked up. Brock Miller with the ball as the Pioneers show a little bit of a press. Anderson outside the right wing three will take the three and knock down the three. Oh, everything falling tonight for the Aggies. 31 to 7, 10.52 left to go here in the first half. Utah's a tough team to press. They can all bring it, and we can throw it over the top to bigger players. Green, down low, ball to Enzaquese. Uh, gets it up and knocks it down, and that'll be his second chance for a three-point play. Converted on the first offensive possession, but that guy's a load down there. Yeah, he really is, and, and players like that, you know, you're so tempted to uh, – to kind of jump up and block that in their hands. You really have to keep your, you be the second guy off the floor, the second guy to jump, make him jump first, and then block that at its peak rather than trying to block yep. it out of his hands because he's not a, he's not a well, compar comparatively, he's not a tall player, but he is trying to use that, uh, that big body. He's got a brother who's a really good player currently for Oral Roberts. Free throw is up and good as well. So now Denver gets to 10 points on the night. Aggies lead 31 to 10. As we reach the midway point here in the first half, Miller to Anderson, attacking the rim, then kicks it back to Miller, takes another three, and won't go. Miller, though, follows the shot, gets the rebound, push shot with the right hand is up and in. Yeah, he, he might go for a, lot, for a lot today. He's feeling good about his, uh, his shot. Brock Miller in double digits, the only player to hit 10 so far. He's got 10 points on four of eight shooting. Green swings it back over to Gatlin on the left wing. Gatlin to Townsend outside the three-point line extended. Swings it right to Murky. Murky guarded closely by Bean. Tries to get around the edge. Puts the shot up and rattles it home. Gets into the lane. Pushes it up and in. 33 to 12. Aggies up by 21. 9.55 left to go first half action. Justin Bean to Porter. Porter trying to post up. Anderson inside. Keeps it himself. Attacks the rim and lays it up and in with the right hand. I mean, Make that it, is, yeah, making it look just, easy. He does. He's just uh, really looks effortless. Great, very deceiving quick step. Townsend wide open three, won't go, and Porter pulls it down. Abel Porter crosses the timeline. Aggies in there all whites in blue trim. Attacks the rim, swings it back over to Brock for three. Yes! Brock Miller has 13 points on the night, and the Aggies up by 26. 38 to 12, 917 and counting left to go first half action. Yeah, I'm not sure what scouting report they were looking at, but don't leave that fella open when he's feeling it. Timeout on the court, we'll take it as well. 38 to 12, our score, 9-12 left, first half action. You're listening to Aggie Basketball from Learfield IMG College. percent from the field, 14 of 22, including 8 of 13 from three. That's 62 percent. 
and the Aggies lead by 26, 38 to 12. Aggies have only turned it over one time, only three turnovers for Denver. It's been rebounding, it's been interesting. Aggies already uh, with five offensive rebounds and have out-rebounded Denver 15 to four. Scott Gerard alongside Lance Beckert, it's Aggie Hoops from Learfield IMG College. Remember the first Aggie basketball coaches show featuring Craig Smith will be Monday, December 2nd at six o'clock from the Old Chicago Pizza and Tap Room on the corner of 14th North and 795 East in Logan. Coach Smith brings a couple players. You'll be able to interact and ask questions. Food specials and prizes also available for everybody who attends. All right, so Townsend set to trigger the inbound here on the near sideline. 38 to 12, our score. Eastman now with the ball. Swings it back over to Murky on the left wing. Murky tries to come around a screen. Bad pass, but finally collected, though, by Townsend. Townsend into the lane. Pulls up Enziquezi. He puts the shot up and gets it to go. It's going to be a good player in the Summit League. Yeah, you know, I think um, he's really hard to guard. The Aggies might need to find a way to get him to catch it a little further from the basket. Yep, 38-14. Anderson on the right baseline. Swings it back over on the left wing. And Abel Porter fouled as he drives. And they're going to get number 12, Kernaz, on the foul. Yeah, out of bounds here. Denver's been uh, consistently playing this uh, zone out of bounds, and then they kind of stay in it. Let's see if the Aggies can get another open three. Inbound to Bean on the left elbow. Bean goes against Kernaz, puts the right-hand shot, won't go. Tipped up, can't get the rebound to go. Actually tips it out to Bearstow. Bearstow's shot won't go from the right elbow, and the Aggies go 0 for 2 on that possession. Eastman with the ball on the right wing. Aggies up 38-14, 8.25 left to go in the game. Eastman. Holding, holding, waiting for Karnaz to come out and set a screen for him. Bean picks him up, swings it over to Townsend on the left wing. Townsend pulls up from the left elbow. Shot or goes awry. Karnaz tries to get the rebound, but instead Anderson comes away with it. Aggies want to run. Bearstow back to Porter. Down low to Anderson all by himself, and he'll throw down the dunk. Thank you very much. Yeah, they, the Denver's just running out of gas right here. This is a pace they are not uh, used to playing, even though they, they are playing a mile high. This is... Uh, getting to them just a little bit. It's a team that beat UVU by 12 just a couple nights ago. And the ball intended for Murky is going to go out of bounds. Unforced error by Denver on a bad pass. Brings us to a media timeout. Aggies up 40 to 14. That's right, 40 to 14. 7.46 left to go in the first half on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College. Utah State leading Denver 40 to 14. 7.46 left to go here in the first half. Brock Miller leading all scores with 13 points. Go down the list here, coach. You look at uh, uh, Sam Merrill with six, Abel Porter with four. You got Diogo Brito with eight. Alfonso Anderson's come and started to fill it up a bit. He's got seven points and Justin Bean with a bucket. And I got a sneaking suspicion it's gonna be a night where everybody feasts. Yeah, you know, it's um, <laughs> all of Thanksgiving right there. Yep. And, and you know, last week, um, or against uh, Weber State, you know, all but one player that uh, checked in um, scored. Um, Roche missed yep. his opportunity. At one, he was 0 for 1. Justin Bean inbounds to Porter. Aggies moving right to left. Eastman picks him up in midcourt. Porter works to his right, then hands over to Merrill. Merrill back to Bean. Bean will drive from the right wing and then dish it to Porter for three. It goes, but they're going to say Brock on the charge. Uh, before Abel Porter is able to get the shot up. Yeah, not my favorite call. This is the pass yeah, and I don't crash, like that call. right? The yeah. pass and crash. Um, I think we just, that's kind of a wimpy way to play defense, in my opinion. 
All right, moving left to right is Eastman and the Denver Pioneers. Eastman trying to get it to his big man, Robert Jones, number 21 on the elbow. Hands over to Murky, who takes the shot from the free throw line, and it won't go, and Abel Porter pulls down another rebound. Porter on the right wing, comes around a bean screen, back to Brock. Brock wanted to trigger the three, but couldn't quite get it off. Porter then circles back to Merrill, and Merrill works right. Down low to Porter. Porter had a good look, passed out of it. Try to get it to Bean, and they're going to get a travel down low on Utah State. Yeah, Abel, um, you know, thought he had Bean cutting a little earlier and uh, was ready to kind of make that pass and had to stutter step a little bit to uh, control his balance. Roscoe Eastman, all five foot nine of him, working mm. it to Kernaz on the right wing. Mm. Hands into the Pioneers working left, down low to number 21. That's Jones. Jones trying to attack the rim. Bean oh. and Dorius are there, but he's still able to get the push shot up and in. Yeah, he kind of shot that hook. Uh, that was a no-look hook. No-look hook. <laughs> that was a no-look hook. I like it. Brock Miller down low to Dorius, who throws down the dunk. Oh, ho, ho. Trevin Dorius with a nasty dunk, and he draws the foul, too. Oh, he's very coachable. He learned from his first mistake and just uh, kind of got fronted there, had good position, caught the ball over the top, and dunked it without bringing the ball down. It's a great play by the Aggies, too, drawn up there offensively. So Dorius is going to attempt the free throw after a filthy dunk. Aggies lead 42-16, 6.32 left to go in the game. Free throw, high, but no good. Rebound tipped around. Brito to Bean, and Bean can't finish. Gets his own rebound, and he lays it up and in. <laughs> oh, my goodness. We are, uh, that's a little Moses Malone action there. He's padding his stats. <laughs> Misses the point blank, but then rips down his own rebound. Denver working on the right wing. Back up top to Enzaquazi. Hands over to Townsend on the left. Back to Enzaquazi. Tries to attack Bean. Puts his body into him. No foul. Nope, they will call a foul, but it's going to go against Utah State. All right. That's a good good try there. Um, just not quite, uh, referee didn't quite fall for it. But you know, I'd like to see Clay Stahl in the game here to, to, to throw his body around. I think defensively he's um, he is really, really strong, lower body core. I'd like to see that match up a little bit if, um, if uh, Dave. As a second free throw coming up, Aggies lead 44-17. 6.05 left to go in the first. Knocks both free throws down. As Enzaquazi right now at 10 points. Okay, yeah, Enzaquazi really giving us some trouble inside. No doubt about that. Bean up top, center circle. Trying to get it to Dorius. Dorius now on the left low block. Goes against Enzaquazi. Can't finish at the rim. Ball tipped around and finally pulled down by Ray Kowalski into the game for Denver, who has not seen any action so far this year, but gets put in into the first half in this game here in Logan. Townsend being guarded by Bean, swings it cross court to Murky, who launches the three, won't go, and the rebound pulled down by Diogo Brito. Aggies up 44-18, 5.29 left to go in the first half. Oh. Dory is wide open, couldn't get it to him, so instead Sam will take the right wing three and knock it down. Sam Merrill now with nine points on the night, and the Aggies up 47-18. With 5.15 left to go here in the first half. Yeah, again, uh, you know, they're, Denver's just so up against it, they end up leaving, uh, you know, our best shooter shooting 100% right now to wide open shot. Murky hands back to Kernaz. Back to Murky on the right wing. Over to Eastman. Eastman working it left. Double teamed in the right corner. Needs to get rid of it. Finally will call a timeout as he got caught up in traffic. Yeah. So timeout on the court, Aggies lead 47-18. Yeah, th I mean, they just have nothing going, right? Yeah. I mean, just nothing going. I don't know if we're staying here or not, but that's the defense I'm talking about from Weber State. Just, just, we're just completely stifling them. 30-second timeout. We'll go ahead and keep it here. 47-18, our score. Aggies now shooting 60% from the field, and Sam Merrill just an easy three for three. Just another day at the office for him. Yeah, you know, and I think this is the first game that he's had feet set and nobody running at him. He's just open. It's like a... You know, it's like a warm-up shot for him right now. So defensively, that, that's a credit to how well the ball is moving offensively. Um, you know, if you're not able to watch it and you're listening, it's just, you know, Scotty's doing a great job keeping up with it. But that ball is moving. And, uh, you know, they're just not, they're just leaving Sam. He's able to get his feet set and shoot that in. Denver comes back out after needing the timeout. Now keep an eye, only three seconds left on the shot clock. 
4.50 left to go here in the first half. So Denver, after needing to call that timeout, needs to get this shot up quick. Craig Smith aligning his troops. They get it to Townsend. Townsend comes around the screen, puts the shot up from the baseline, won't go. Rebound, Brito taps it to Bean, and Bean hands over to Merrill. Here comes the Aggies, moving quickly. Merrill back to Anderson. Anderson thinks about a three, then dishes over to Brito. Brito circles right to Anderson, to Porter. Porter on the left wing. Porter, crossover dribble, picks up his dribble, hands over to Anderson on the left low block. Anderson going to work. Anderson. Kicks it over to Brito. Brito launches the three. It's going to be a bit short, and the rebound pulled down by Enziquezi. 4.20 left to go first half. Aggies lead 47-18. Lonzi with the ball to Townsend. Townsend picked up by Bean. Down low to Nerzot, Ner, Neraz, and his turnaround shot won't go, but he's fouled, and that'll put Denver to the line. Yeah, we talked earlier that if you're going to uh, swipe at the basketball, but you're not giving up an end one. I think Abel kind of uh, demonstrated there to the uh, two young post players how to do that. Kernaz, who has not attempted a free throw yet this year, only averaging about 13 minutes a game, steps up to the free throw line. Let's see how he shoots them. Pretty well. Knocks it down. Yeah, not a bad stroke at all. He's Yeah, again, this is a, you know, a, a chance for Denver to kind of catch their breath and, and uh, take a shot, whereas... You know, within the offense, everything seems like it's forced because the Aggies are doing such a great job um, making it uncomfortable yeah. for the Pioneers. Kernaz lining up his second three th free throw. Bearstow has checked in. Karbowski's also checked in for the Aggies. One thing Denver's got going for them tonight, they're making free throws. They're now five for five. Make that six for six. Anderson lines up the long left wing three. It's going to be long, but Karbovsky fouled on the rebound attempt. And that'll send Utah State to the line on a one and one. Yeah, a little frustration foul there. I think, uh, you know, things aren't quite going your way. You get a little frustrated and a little irritated that you can't pull down a rebound and end up uh, chucking a guy out of the way. So Karbovsky steps up to the line. Free throw is short. And quickly coming away with it is Murky. Aggies lead 47 to 20, 355 left to go. Ball is tipped away, deflected by Brito, controlled by Anderson. Anderson to Merrill. Merrill kicks it back over to Anderson. Anderson drives base, dishes to Kravovsky, then hands over to Merrill, drives baseline, swings over to Anderson. Anderson on the left low block, right hand shot off the glass, got it to go. Boy, he's acrobatic down there in the blocks. He really is, and I, and I think he's a lot stronger than uh, we've probably given him credit for. So that'll pay dividends as we get into league play with some bigger fours. And Zaquazi pump fakes the three, pulls Karbovsky out. Then the ball deflected away. Brito fights Boy. for it. Brito's got it. Beautiful steal, and Brito finishes at the rim. Active hands, two straight deflections. Some larceny at midcourt leads to a dunk for Diogo Brito and the Aggies with their largest lead of 31. 51 to 20, three minutes left to go, first half action. Ends a quasi, hands over to Townsend. Townsend will track the long three, knocks it down, and that's the first three-point shot attempt made by Denver in the game. 51-23, Aggies lead big, 2.47 left to go, first half. Bearstow looking for his first points. Behind the back dribble, cut off nicely, so Brito collects. Back to Anderson. Anderson on the left wing to Merrill. Merrill to Brito. Brito then posting up Karbovsky, who's a little further away from the rim than he'd like, so he dishes over to Bearstow. Back to Brito. Brito on the pass. Goes off his hands and out of bounds. Turnover, Utah State. Something we have not said a lot of in this game. In fact, that's only the third turnover on the Aggies. 51-23, Aggies leading big with 2.29 left to go in the first half. Utah State Hoops from Learfield IMG College.
first half, Utah State cruising 51-23. A Mountain View Veterinary Health Center hosting the first annual Pet of the Month contest. November's winner is Penelope, a one-year-old hedgehog. Congratulations to that hedgehog and her owner, Laren Dykes, on being selected as the Pet of the Month presented by Mountain View Vet. I only thought hedgehogs were like a video game, and I mentioned that in the last broadcast. Somebody came to our remote on our radio show and brought pictures of the hedgehog that they had. Oh. So apparently hedgehogs are quite That's popular to have as a pet. All right. I asked him, did they do anything? Like, no, it just kind of sits there. <laughs> All right. Sounds like my kids. Yeah. That's a does it play video games? That's the question. It could be like my kids. <laughs> All right. Eastman with the ball, moving left to right, being guarded by Bearstow. Swings it back over to Townsend on the right wing. Townsend comes out as the Aggies switch and put Anderson on him. Then work it to Eastman on the left wing. Back up top to Townsend. Long three. Rattles out. Bearstow comes away with it. 51-23. Aggies up big. Sam Merrill to Diogo Brito. Brito. Cut off on the baseline drive, hands over to Sam. Sam has a good look, caught up in traffic, loses the handle, but there to pick it up is Karbovsky, and he lays it up and in. Yes. Should we give Sam an assist on that one? I, I think you do. I think Sam brought the army, and that was kind of a belly button pass. There you go. Aggies up 53-23, 30-point lead. Largest lead has been 31 in this game. Eastman on the right wing to Townsend. To en Enzaquazi. Back to Townsend. Townsend comes around a screen, gets into the lane, picks up his dribble, bounces oh, no. to Enzaquazi, who lays it up and in. A little bit of a miscue on the Aggies defensively as Denver gets a nice layup. Yeah, you know, they screen quite a bit. There's single screens, double screens, lots of different screens, and that's the first time I've seen the Aggies make an error in coverage. Bearstow comes around a screen, oh. looking for Karbovsky, didn't see the pass coming his way, goes off his foot, out of bounds, and the Aggies give it back to Denver. Bean and Miller come back into the game. Barstow and Karbovsky are going to check out. Actually, no, Bearstow's out. Yeah, I think the discussion here is, hey, the pocket pass is great, except when your player is 7-2. They want to throw yeah. it up high yeah. as opposed to, you know, if you're making that play to Sam Merrill, Brock, Bean, any of those guys, a pocket pass, which is just a little bounce pass between two defenders is a great idea, but not when your player is 7-2. Townsend on the left wing. Works it back up top to Robert Jones, gives it to Green. Nice entry pass. Green, right-hand shot on the spin move, lays it up and in. Yeah, Bean just got around the front with the ball above him and no, no help on the backside. 53-27. Bean will launch his second three-point shot attempt of the season. Won't go. And here comes Denver quickly with the rebound. Townsend works back up top to Murky. Back to Townsend, back to Murky. Murky to Townsend on the right wing. Drives on Brito. Attacks the rib. Won't go. Sam, Brito, and others fighting for the rebound. Goes out of bounds. Who will it stay with? Denver. Yeah, you know, no, uh, no shot blocker in the game right now for the Aggies. And Denver immediately picks up a little dribble drive action. And, and uh, they're really forcing the issue at the rim. 53-27. Aggies up by 26. Largest lead has been 31. As Murky drives against Brock Miller. Has a nice look at the rim, can't finish on the right-hand layup. Bean comes away with it to Merrill on the left wing, crossing the timeline. 29 seconds left, about 24 on the shot clock. There's about a two-second differential right now. Merrill's being guarded closely by Murky. 16 seconds left. 10 on the shot clock. Sam Merrill still pounding the dribble near midcourt. Anderson comes out to set a screen. Sam loses the handle, then comes back. Four, three, two, launches the three. No good off the front of the iron. And that is how the first half will end. Denver unable to get a shot up as Craig Smith comes out to talk to Justin Bean and others on that last possession. But the Aggies up big, 53-27. A 26-point lead for the Aggies over the Denver Pioneers. Utah State cruising in this one, Coach. And you know what? There's still always teachable moments as Craig Smith <laughs> comes out and uh, has a word with some of his players on how they handled that last possession. Yeah, so not really a traditional lineup out there, right? And I think Bean was supposed to be the, the, the five, right, the post player and come up and ball screen. Well, that's nothing he's done all season long because we've had a, a big out there. So, yes, teachable moments always, and Craig Smith will not miss the opportunity to educate these young men. Aggie scored 53 points in the first half and did not score in the last two minutes and eight seconds. Yeah, just the ball got stuck a little bit with the Aggies, and that kind of, um, you know, changed the pace of the game just a little bit down the stretch. Give you your first half stats. Utah State leads 53-27 when we come back on the Aggie Sports Network from Learfield IMG College.
and Denver as the Aggies lead 53-27 at the break. All right, so Coach, um, outside of just parking the car in the driveway, what do you want to see here in the second half? Well, you know, the one thing I um, – <clears throat> you know, Denver's not going away. I think they're – probably make some adjustments. They are a team that can shoot threes, um, so you do have to take care of business. I, You know, going – Kind of scoreless the last two minutes of the half. A little, little smaller size lineup out there. But I, d I guarantee you at halftime there was some discussion about starting the second half like we started the first half. So we'll start with the ball. and we'll Start with our – is it our ball? Uh, it is. Okay. Well, yeah. let's, uh, let's see if they can't come out with a little more uh, furious action like they did in the first half. Justin Bean will trigger that inbound over on the far sideline. Yeah, I couldn't remember an alternating position. Back over to Murky. Murky pulls up from the right elbow. Missed it badly. Sam Merrill comes away with a rebound. No, there's no established position. Not a legal guarding position at all. Back to Bean on the right baseline to Karbowski. Hands over to Merrill. Screen from Karbowski. Merrill caught up in traffic, so he works it to Miller. He takes a long three, and he knocks it down. <laughs> yeah, Sam a little upset there. Kind of that probing dribble. He thought he got, uh, he got pushed in there, but... Boy, how bad? How, how bad? I mean, how bad is he feeling it today, Brock? Boy, I'll tell you. Aggies matching their largest lead of 31. Eastman tried to go up and under, gives up on it, hands over Start. to Townsend. Townsend will get hit with the offensive foul, crashing into the lane. And Sam Merrill took the brunt of that one, slow getting up. Well, he just wanted to demonstrate to uh, to Mr. Wilson, our referee, what a true charge looks like. May have hurt a little bit, but Porter will trigger the inbounds. Gets it to Sam. Sam on the right low block. Patiently gets it off the glass. Won't go. Tipped around. Goes out of bounds. And it'll stay with Utah State. Yeah, Sam getting a little frustrated here. You know, he kind of feels like he's getting cheated a little bit. And he's taking a deep breath. You know, he went through this last year. You know, sometimes, uh, you know, the referee's just not seeing everything. Long inbound to Bean. Bean wants to drive in the lane, spins, picks up his dribble, shot won't go. Aggies missed a few shots mm. there at the rim, and finally Denver comes away with it. Lanzi with the ball in the left wing. Lanzi works it left. Townsend posting up Enziquezi, loses the handle. Townsend's able to collect. Works it back over to Naraz. He misses a long three, and Justin Bean gets it off the bounce to Brock Miller. Brock Miller to Sam. To Kurbovsky. Kurbovsky on the left low block looking to pass. Couldn't find a post man to point uh, to pass to, so he gets it to Bean. Bean on the left elbow can't get the turnaround jumper to go. Yeah. Some ragged play here to start the first or the second half. 58-27, 31 point lead for the Aggies. Seven minutes or uh, 17 minutes left to go here in the second half. Eastman cut off on the drive. Gets it to Enzaquazi. He's double teamed. Bean comes over late to provide the double team, but allows the offensive rebound to be collected by Kernaz, but his shot up at the rim won't go. Well, it's such a different uh, start to the second half, uh, not nearly what we expected. Plenty of open shots, yep. just not going in for either team. Yep, we've uh, nearly played three and a half minutes, and the Aggies have scored only five points, and that's been the only five points of the second half. Justin Bean spins in the lane, hands over to Brock. He'll take that three, miss it off the iron, but there for the offensive rebound is Justin Bean. Abel Porter collects, drives down to Bean. Bean right hand layup up and in. 32% yeah. from the field. Aggies 52%. Abel Porter gets in the lane. Euro step. Can't finish, but gets into the line for some free throws after drawing the foul. Yeah, continue to working on that drive. Just wears him out. Denver looks really tired. Yeah, Denver's ready for this game to be over. 60 to 29. Aggies up by 31. Utah State leading big. 60 to 29. 15 42 left to go. Here in the first or in the second half, excuse me. Monson Vision is a proud sponsor of Aggie Athletics, proud to sponsor tonight's game as the Aggies cruising right now. Brock Miller with 16 points on the night on 6 of 12 shooting, including 4 of 10 from beyond the three-point line. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, De Denver just looks gassed, just looks, um, you know, I mean, they probably watched the film, Utah State against Weber State, and giggled a little bit and said, man, not us. We're going to come in here and handle that. And they just, nothing's going their way. And, uh, yeah, like you like you mentioned right before we went to break, they just look like they want this game to be over. So Abel Porter is going to step up to the free throw line. Abel Porter so far on the season 
is four of five from the free throw line. You know, it's funny, first half of the season last year wasn't great from the free throw line, and then once he got into the starting lineup, and I jinxed him there as he missed that first one, once he got into that starting lineup, he had some key free throws down the stretch and shot nearly uh, well over 80% over the second half of the season, and a lot of those coming in some pressure situations. Yeah, I mean, shooting, uh, especially free throws, is so much about confidence and how you're feeling, and, uh, you know, he's uh, absolutely uh, defining that point. Denver moving right to left, wearing their all reds. Murky with the ball, works it right. Hands over to Kowalski, and he'll dish it left. Over to Lanzi on their left baseline. Takes a long three and knocks it down. By the way, Denver has made a three-pointer in 407 straight games. Yeah, I mean, it's always been kind of uh, something that they've relied on. Porter swings over to Sam, who is wide open for three, and fouled on that three. Couldn't get it to go, but took a nasty hit. Was wide open, and uh, he'll step up to the free throw line for a three free throws. Yeah, hitting the head. That's They're going to get Lanzi <laughs> with the foul. Yeah, Lanzi just trying to recover out of position and flying at him and just couldn't control himself, and three shots here for Sam. Here comes a couple or three free throws. Knocks it down. Yeah, quite uh, talk about confidence in your shot at the line. Second free throw up and good. Thought I jinxed in there. That one almost hit the rim. <laughs> <laughs> He'll have one more coming up. And here comes the third free. Draws the back of the standard, so you can't say it was an air ball, but pretty doggone close. Anderson tries to dish it to Bean. Bean loses the handle, goes out of bounds, turnover Utah State. Yeah, I think Anderson just st still kind of finding his, finding his way within this motion. I think um, sharing the basketball probably not so much in uh, junior college. That's kind of just, yeah, something that he'll continue to develop. Lanzi to Kowalski on the right wing. Abel Porter's there to put a hand in his face. So he dishes it to Green outside the three-point line straight away. Back to Lanzi on the left wing, posting up Jones. Jones is there as Dorius deflects the shot, and here comes the Aggies coming the other way. Porter doesn't have numbers, doesn't care. Loses the handle on his way up. Kowalski comes away with it. So the Aggies back-to-back -back turnovers. Kowalski moving right to left to Lanzi over to Murky. Murky on the right baseline, thinks about the three, but decides to pull it back out. Drives, then back to Lackey. Or Lanzi, excuse me. Lanzi collected. Wow. Jones comes away with the rebound. Yeah, that's a, that's a shot I think Diogo will uh, regret all through the night. 64-32, still big lead. And a foul. Probably against Sam, I'm Away thinking. from the ball yeah. is going to go against Sam Merrill. Yeah, got a little caught uh, on the post behind and tried to see if he could grab his way around the front. And uh, referee caught him with his hand in the cookie jar. 64-32, Aggies up 32, 13-39 left to go here in the second half. Inbound all the way up top to Murky. Murky coming around a screen from Jones. Picks up his dribble, swings over to Green on the left baseline. Back to Murky on the left wing. He'll give it back to Green. Anderson gives him his space, so he drives, dishes down low, stolen away by Bearstow. Stow, Bearstow with the steal to Brito. Brito attacking the rim. Finally works it back over to Merrill. Merrill drives baseline and attacks the rim. Fouled. He'll go to the free throw line once again. Yeah, he's, um, he's really found, uh, found a way to get himself uh, and help these Aggies out on the scoreboard, and that's getting himself to the line. 64-32, Sam Merrill with 12, and he'll have a chance to add to that total with a couple free throws coming up. Aggie shooting 50% from the field, 48% from three, and right now six of nine from the free throw line. Now make it seven of ten as Merrill just buried the first free throw. Aggies have only made one out of their last eight field goal attempts. Getting a little ragged here in the second half. Yeah, you know, it almost feels like uh, the basket's capped a little bit. Um, so getting to the line is a good way to uh, kind of release those demons. Sam Merrill hits the second free throw. He now has 14 on the night. And the Aggies push the lead to 34, 66-32. Hard to say it's getting ragged when you lead by 34. <laughs> That's just going to happen. Pass from Green, intended for Taylor Gatlin, just goes out of bounds. Gatlin didn't see it coming. And Utah State will collect on the near sideline. Yeah, the Aggies uh, shooting uh, percentage has dropped to a drastic 50-plus percent. <laughs> <laughs> 
where it was about 64 at halftime. Diogo Brito comes around a Kervovsky screen, swings it right to Bearstow. Bearstow drives and kicks it to Anderson on the right. Brown to Brock Miller to Kervovsky, swings it back over to Anderson, step back, spin, loses the handle, collects to Bearstow on the right baseline. To Brito, Brito has the ball go off the foot of a Denver Pioneer, collects to Karwalski, who then swings it back over to Murky, who buries the baseline three. So Denver doing a much better job in transition and a much, much better job defensively here in the second half, but still trail big, 66-35. Brock Miller to Bearstow, Bearstow to Anderson, Anderson to Brito, who circles back to the middle of the court. Brock Miller then back to Brito on the left wing. Miller trying to get in the lane, swings over to Bearstow for three, yes! Sean Bearstow buries the three, and the Aggies up 69-35. Yeah, that'll be a good confidence boost for that young man. I see his ball going through the hoop. Gatlin to Green, Green over to Kowalski on the right wing. Over to Murky, he'll take another three, missed that one badly, and Anderson gets the rebound. Coach Greg Smith said, let's go. Miller back to Bearstow. Bearstow on the right wing, and he draws the foul. 11.42 left to go here in the game, and the Aggies up 69-35. to You're listening to Aggie Basketball from Learfield IMG College. Score, Utah stayed out big and have led big the majority of this game as uh, Utah State looking to go 3-0 and to start the season. Another game coming up later this week on Friday. And then next week, uh, Utah State has a game on Monday and then will hit the road to play in Jamaica. Neither you or I will be on that trip. I'll have the Utah State-Boise State game in football, and Tony Parks will be enjoying the sunny weather down in Jamaica. <clears throat> yeah, and I will be uh, not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hopefully, we'll, uh, the good weather will continue here in Cache Valley. It's been gorgeous. This is a great, hey, great time of year. Sorry, Scott. No, you're fine. Remember, the small business game changer is here. One local small business <laughs> will have the chance to win a marketing package with Utah State Athletics. More information and registration is available at utahstateaggies.com slash game changer. Big thanks to Guild Mortgage and Logan for sponsoring the Small Business Game Changer, NML, NMLS, number 3274, equal housing lender. Garbowski with the ball outside the three-point line. Aggies moving left to right. Nice spin move by Anderson down in the paint. Patiently puts the oh, shot foul, up. No yeah. good, but okay. draws the foul. He'll go to the line. A late whistle there. I thought we had to help him a little bit. Remember, Alfonso Anderson, who is perfect eight for eight from the free throw line, hit so many big free throws down the stretch in Montana against Montana State. That were necessary, right? I mean, they yeah. were game-winning free throws. Are you, uh, you, you saying I jinxed him here? No, no. He Well, he did hit the rim a little bit, so I guess. Nine for nine. <laughs> yeah, trying to find his way within the offense, right? So it seems like uh, end of the first half with those two, Barstow the other I'm talking about, just have to kind of find a way to play together. Not quite Abel and Sam uh, combination yet. Anderson buries both free throws. Aggies up 72 to 35 with 11.30 left to go here in the game. Let's see if that Aggies, if they can keep it up defensively and see if we can't get back out and tra transition a little bit. Lanzi over to Jones. Jones back over to Gatlin on the right wing. 
Gatlin cut off nicely by Bearstow, so he hands it back to Lanzi. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Lanzi gets caught up in the lane. Shot blocked away by Karbovsky. Bounce pass to Bearstow, attacking with the left hand. Lays it up and in, draws the foul. Woo, how about that in transition? Yeah, it's uh, like I said, something about seeing your ball go through from beyond the arc kind of gets you going, and that was a great finish by the young number two. 73-35, an extra or a uh, free throw attempt coming up. Yeah, just great job in transition. Again, starts on the defensive end, right? We've got a block shot, and uh, that kind of leads the way, and that's, that's really been, um, you know, over these last two games what's given the Aggies their spark. Bearstow knocks down the free throw. And here comes Denver as the Aggies lead big by 39, 74-35. On the right wing, down low on the right baseline. Bounce pass, collected in traffic and stolen away by Karbovsky. Jones couldn't collect in the lane, comes away with another Aggie turnover. Anderson over to Bearstow, who's had a nice run. Over to Miller, Miller for three, no good. And Green is going to get here, a yeah. nasty box-out penalty against Anderson where he kind of put him in the first row. Yeah, you know, Anderson's kind of getting under his skin a little bit because he's coming out, and I think that's uh, – is that his uh, fifth foul of the game? I think he might be it for we him. might have the right-left chant coming here. Yeah, Green is done with five. No Aggie player has more than two fouls. And uh, other than uh, – Green, who's checking out with three. Jones has three for Denver. 74-35, 10-31 left to go in the game. Anderson lines up a couple of free throws here. Yeah, a lot of frustration from Denver, and that happens when you're not able to play freely offensively. First free throw goes on the one-and-one. One. He'll have one more. And with that, Utah State is up by 40, 75-35. After beating Weber State by 50-plus, Aggies trying to do the same tonight here against Denver. Second free throw up and good. Wow. So Utah He's, State now on a 10-0 run, 14-3 run over the last four and a half minutes. Yeah, just um, it really, really, I mean, everything is going right when it wasn't offensively for the Aggies. They just kind of turned, found a way to turn it around from the, on the defensive end, and now, yeah, everything's roses. Gatlin hands over to Townsend. Townsend swings it up top to Murky. Murky comes around a screen by Jones. Gets in the lane. Attacks with the right hand. No good, but he does draw the foul. And it'll go to the free throw line. Crowd chanting up by 40. You don't get to say that very often, but tonight and uh, late last week have been kind of those games where things have just gone Utah State's way. But they're the aggressors here. They're just the ones forcing the issue. Yeah, and not doing anything really unsportsmanlike, just continuing to play their brand of basketball. By the way, Utah State has outscored Denver 23-8 to here in the second half. Here yeah, comes free throw number two. We might need the over-under on the up by 50 chant coming and Murky soon. Murky misses both free throws. Oh, yeah. That's the big Nemeas doll giving him some hassles. Bearstow, crossover, kicks it back to Brito. Baseline three, no good. Rebound tipped around, controlled by Utah State. But they're going to get Bearstow, I believe, with a foul. So Bearstow picks up his first foul for the Aggies. That's their fourth team foul of the second half. Denver's up to eight, 76-35, 41-point lead by the Aggies as we reach the 10-minute mark here in the second half. Murky holding, gets into the lane. Aggies converge, so they swing it back to Enzaquazi, who's back into the game after a bit of a rest. Now over to Murky on the right wing. Eight seconds on the shot clock. Murky tries to drive, loses the handle, and the foul is going to go against, I believe, Justin Bean. I think they got no nope, uh, Brock Miller. Yeah, kind of got. I think Justin was there to help, and <clears throat> Brock just kind of got his hand in there and got uh, again caught. So Murky steps up to the free throw line. He'll have two. 76-35. Went 0 for two on his last trip. Lines this one up and rattles it home, uses every part of the rim, but gets it to go. Karbovsky's going to check out. Boy, I'll tell you what. By you the way, Karbovsky is double-digit in rebounds, <laughs> 10 rebounds tonight. 
Yeah, he's uh, like I said, he's kind of found his niche and his way to play within uh, within this team. Murky misses the second free throw. 76-36. Point spread remains 40 for Utah State. Bearstow to Miller. Miller launches another three. Oh. And guess what? He just buried another three. Miller with 29, or excuse me, 19 points. Yeah, definitely shooting it with a lot of confidence today. Now he's still a ways away from his career high, which is 26 against Mississippi Valley State last year. Down low to Enzaquazi, double team, can't get a ball up, collects his own miss, misses again, and finally Justin Bean comes away with it. Long pass to Brock Miller. Miller attacking the rim. His oh. shot is blocked at the rim. Nice job by Murky to come back and contest the shot, and the Aggies will inbound. Boy, Enzaquazi kind of a non-factor in the second half. The Aggies have uh, really did a good job yeah, he's, wearing he's, him out. He's breathing heavily on that sideline. Get it to Brock Miller on the inbound. Bounce pass from Diogo Brito, and he lays it up and in. And look, just like that, Brock's got 21 on the night. Yeah. Oh, we got a little foul. <laughs> is it on Dorius? Yeah, it is on Dorius. Or early in the transition, kind of grabbed his guy. and Not happy with it, but. So the official is starting to get some whistles in here. Brock Miller is going to check out with 21 points on 8.46 left to go here in the game. Yeah, foul count a little, uh, little off balance there. It's a uh, little balance now, so we'll be all right. Murky on the right wing trying to drive. Turnaround jumper up and good. And Murky now has 14 points on the night. He and Enzaquazi, the only players in double figures for the Pioneers. Alfonso Anderson to Bearstow, back to Brito. Brito drives left. Shot blocked at the rim by Enzaquazi. There to collect is Dorius. Dorius can't put his left hand up and in on the layup attempt. And Jones comes away with the rebound. Gatlin with the ball. Back over to e, uh, Townsend. Townsend has the ball deflected out of his hands. Enzaquazi is able to collect. Gets it to Townsend on the right wing. Now works for the long three. No good. And Bean pulls down another rebound. By the way, Aggies with 44 rebounds to only 18 for Denver. Oh. Brito got caught up in the air. Bad pass. Dorius didn't see it coming. Utah State turns it over. But, Coach, 44-18 rebounding discrepancy in this game. Yeah, Ball deflected. Stolen away. Bean to Bearstow. Bearstow down the lane. Throws down the dunk. Sean Bearstow with eight points on the night with that big dunk for the Aggies. Yeah, that free throw discrepancy coming with the Aggies not allowing almost zero offensive rebounds from Denver. Diogo Brito nearly comes away with another steal. And I know the Aggies, they chart deflections. They've had a bunch of them in this game tonight. Yeah, they're going to need to put more lead in the pencil. Yeah, 7.22 left to go here in the game. Utah State leads 83-38. to You're listening to Aggie basketball from Learfield IMG College. Seven twenty-two left to go here in the first half, or excuse me, in the second half. And if you're the uh, Denver Pioneers, you want no part of me saying first half as you're ready for this game to be over. <laughs> yeah, I think um, <clears throat> you know they'd prefer that clock to just uh, switch to the mercy rule. Yeah, you mentioned it earlier, but zero second chance points for uh, Denver. And on, on the flip side, Utah State with 16. I mean, a complete dominating effort. Our two keys to the game today were rebounding and keeping up the tempo in transition. And I think the, uh, the Aggies have done both of those phenomenally. 7.22 left to go here in the game. Phenomenally, too. I like that. Phenomenally. Yes. As if it was Brett Five, it would have been phenomenally. By the way, i got to get this in as an homage to my guy, David Locke. we got a palindrome score going on right now, 83-38. May oh. not last very long. That's right. Eastman. 
to Enzaquazi. You can't get the shot to go. And Utah State comes away with a rebound. Anderson on the right wing. Rito then to Bearstow. Lines up the long three. It's going to be wide right. And Karbowski comes away with his 11th rebound. A beautiful one skying over the head oh. of the Denver Pioneers that try to collect it. But the pass goes off his hands. And uh, another turnover on the Aggie offense. I mean, that ball's coming from the rim. Rim height, right? I mean, that's a, that's a little hard to handle. But he does a great job of rebounding and then keeping that ball really high. I think, yeah, you know, he's got uh, – he's going to be a huge asset coming off the bench when we get Keta back. Kowalski on the right wing. Works over to Jones. Jones to Eastman. 6.38 left to go in the game. 15 seconds on the shot clock for the Pioneers. Kowalski drives. Has the ball deflected out of his hands. Back to Kowalski, and the ball stolen away. Oh. And here comes Bairstow on a baseball pass from Anderson. Left-hand layup won't go. Oh, you got to make those after a pass like that. Ball knocked out of the hands of Jones, goes out of bounds, and will stay with Denver. Boy, wow, he looked like you. a second baseman <laughs> trying to finish off a double play on that pass. Yeah, he sure did. He was in the vicinity, that's for sure. <laughs> got a touch at second base and fired that. I think it uh, surprised everyone, including Bairstow. Here comes Kowalski on the left wing. Swing it back up to Enzaquazi. He tries to drive on Anderson. Anderson knocks the wow. ball out of his hands. Enzaquazi still puts a shoulder run in him and uh, draws the foul. Yeah, kind of where's the pass and crash there. That's uh, That seems like a little unfair. It's great defense, kind of stripping the ball down low. You know, Alfonso, he is just a crafty player defensively and offensively. He just kind of always does the kind of the nitty-gritty stuff. Inbound to Eastman. Eastman along, take a long shot from inside the three-point line by a foot. And Justin Bean comes away with the rebound. Here the crowd yell Bean. He swings it over to Anderson, who lines up a straightaway three. Won't go. Tipped around. Controlled by the Pioneers, but stolen away by Anderson, who gives it to Bean. Bean attacking with right hand. No good, but he does draw the foul. Thought he had himself an old-fashioned three-point play. Yeah, you know, we just kind of talked about the nitty-gritty play of Alfonso. He uh, shoots a three and misses it, yet, you know, tracks down uh, the rebounder and strips that ball away and gets it to Bean, who immediately attacks the rim with force. Fearless with that mask on, broken teeth and all. Yeah, Justin Bean lining up the free throw. 83-38. And Justin Bean breaks our palindrome. Wow, triple word score words over there, bro. I, I mean, <laughs> let's remember uh, I'm a physical education major. 84-38. Roche Groupfam, such a check-in. See if we can get him some points here as Justin Bean lines up another free throw. And it is up and good. Yeah, I, I kind of forgot about him a little bit. Good matchup, right, um, yep. for him defensively. Um, Crowd gives Justin a standing ovation as he walks off. His night's going to be done. Edmund to Kowalski on the right wing. Back up top to number 42. Just checked in. That's Giovanni Bick, uh, Brickman. Ball missed. And Anderson comes away with it. Anderson running the point. Swings it back over to Miller for three. Yes, sir. Brock Miller bearing the three. And the Aggies up 88-38. Long three taken and made as Eastman's able to bury the three from the right wing. Yeah, Brock Miller is just uh, feeling so good. We saw it from his first couple attempts of the game. Anderson drives, dishes right, and he is fouled on the drive. 88-41 our score, 4.55 left to go in the game. Brock Miller leading all scores with 24 I believe his career high is 26. And uh, I think Brock's probably going to be, no, he's still staying in there for now. The coaches do that sometimes, know what a career high is, and leave a guy in to maybe see if he can get it. I think if you have a, I think the SA, SID whispers to him sometimes, I doubt that they have that figure in their head. And um, in a game like this, I think it's something that you can definitely factor in, but. Um, Knowing Coach Smith, I think that uh, the bottom line is that final score. That may be all he's really worried about right now. And I mean, you do tend to live, leave your best scorer on the floor as long as you can, and maybe that's the case today. Yeah. Anderson 
Looking to get the Aggies 90, and he does. Hits the free throw, 90 to 41, as the Aggies almost closing in on a 50-burger in terms of point differential. Clay Stahl's going to check in on the next timeout. Good to see him out there. Bickham hands over to Kowalski. Kowalski drives, right hand push shot, up and in, draws the foul. Boom. And he gets it. So, uh, or they go offensive. No yeah, offensive foul. Offensive right. and wave the basket off. Yep, no bucket. Kowalski, who had not seen any time in any game this year, got in in the middle of the first half. The point a little bit here. Barristow now with the ball near the midcourt stripe. Hands over to Anderson. Anderson on the right wing, attacking. Anderson works it to Miller. Miller for a three, no good. And the rebound tipped around and finally controlled by Eastman. Eastman working right to left to Kowalski, who tries to drive baseline against Stahl, lays it up and in over the top of Stahl. Yeah, ind individually, he's uh, he's got quite a bit of skills and hangs in the air a little ways and good player. Anderson now on the right wing, picks up, loses the dribble. Finally, he's able to collect, hands over to Miller. Miller to Barstow, down to Stahl. Stahl double teamed, spins right, puts a shot up with the left hand, won't go. Rebound collected by Denver. 3.51 and counting left to go. Second half action, Aggies up big. Layup up and in by Eastman. 90 to 45 is our score. 3.42 and counting left to go. Yeah, Aggies, uh, you know, players on the floor right now without a uh, dribble penetration player. Bearstow oh. dishes low to Stahl. Stahl can't finish at the rim. Man. And with that, Denver comes away with it. Eastman. Driving, puts a shot up, floater up and in. 90 to 47. And here comes Anderson. 314 and counting. The Aggies set to improve to 3 0 on the season. Brock Miller to Bearstow. Up top to Anderson, back over to Brock Miller coming around a screen. Brock swings it over to Anderson to Groot Fom. Groot Fom push shot up and in. Good to see him knock down a bucket. Roche Grootfam played junior college action at CSI. Coming in, had to sit out all last year with a torn ACL. Good to see him get out there and get a bucket. Yeah, uh, bigger lineup having to guard these players away from the basket. Kind of tough for uh, the Aggies defensively right now. 92-47, 2.41 left to go here in the game. That brings us to our final media timeout as the Aggies set to improve to 3-0 on the season, leading big, 92-47. You're listening to Aggie Basketball from Learfield IMG College. Go into the game, Utah State leading big over Denver. Denver came in with a nice win over Utah Valley and uh, looked like they were, you know, starting to play some pretty good basketball. But, boy, I tell you what, right from the start, Utah State really flexed their muscles in this game. Yeah, you know, I, I was, uh, you know, saw the score, saw the yeah, re replay and got a little concerned when they yep. had beaten Utah Valley. But, you know, then again, looking back at that Colorado State score, I think this uh, – is a little more indicative, and, and then the Aggies just absolutely, I mean, a dominating first half. Second half, yeah, a little bit, um, maybe falling off just a little bit, um, but trying to get some different lineups. But, yeah, first half just dominant. 
Mountain View Veterinary Health Center celebrates 50 years in Cache Valley and 10 years in Providence. Information about services the Mountain View Vet offers are available at mvvhc.com. Kowalski's first free throw is up and good. He'll earn one more. 92-48, 2.41 left to go in the game. Here comes free throw number two for Kowalski. And it is out. Clay Stahl can't pull down the rebound, but Roche Grootfam can. And then another foul, and this one's going to go against Denver see, on the rebound. Yeah, interesting to see who they put on the line here. Anderson's... Uh, Fonzo's walking up there, but yeah. I think it's Clay Stahl. Yeah, Clay yeah. Stahl's going to have a chance, and I don't know if he's shot in free throws since a, the first Beehive Classic game against the University of Utah two years ago. Stahl with a couple free throws here. Free throw is up and good. Nice. Hey, sports information directors coordinate public relations, websites, social media stats, and deal with angry radio guys all the time. The SIDs for today's game are Kyle Cottom of Utah State and Chris Smith of the University of Denver. Big thanks to all you do in support of your student athletes, coaches, and institutions. More information is available at cosida.com slash thank your SID. Thank you, Kyle. I believe there's a free milkshake every time we say that. I think Aggie ice cream uh, for the radio staff. <laughs> 229, <laughs> turnaround jump shot missed, and we'll go to the free throw line as the officials get paid by the whistle in tonight's game. Yeah, apparently they didn't get the memo. We were ready to uh, park the car in the garage there, but that's all right. Giovanni Bickman will step up to the free throw line. 224 left to go in the game, and the Aggies up 93-48, and the Aggie faithful here. Hanging out, see if the Aggies can break a C-no tonight. Still hoping for free tacos. Free throw up by Bickman is good. Second one coming up with 2.24 left to go in the game. Yeah, I got to imagine, you know, the free throw percentage is just not very good for opponents. We've got to start getting some attention uh, from our student section, maybe nationally coming up, uh, especially with the five Spider-Men down there. And the free throw is up and good. So two for two on that trip Dang it. for Bickham. 93-50, <laughs> Aggies up by 43. Largest lead in this game has been 49. Barristow to Anderson, Anderson to Brock Miller, who's still a couple points away from his career high. Ball on a cross-court pass, stolen away by Eastman, and this shot is blocked by Barristow, but they're going to call Barristow with the goal 10. Count the bucket. Yeah, I think that ball went off the backboard first. Let's take a look. He, uh, oh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, Good call. Hey, great effort. Yep, that's the correct call. 93-52. Two minutes exactly left to go in the game. Anderson comes around a screen to Barristow. Barristow on the left wing, waiting for a group bomb screen. Barristow loses the handle. Ball goes off his hands. He collects. Back over to Brock Miller for three. Yes! There's his career high. Brock Miller knocks it down. 27 points on the night. Wow, unbelievable performance. And working at the center court is Eastman. 96-52, 132 left to go in the game. Swing it cross court to Kurnaz. He works against Grootfam and is able to lay it up and in over the top of him. 120 left to go in the game. Aggies up 96-54. to Anderson on the right wing. Hands over to Brock Miller. Miller back to Anderson, cross-court pass, and another foul. This one, I believe, is going to go against Roche, hmm. offensively trying to set position. Yeah, still trying to kind of find his rhythm. Again, when you sit out like that, it takes a little while and not, not being able to get a lot of game reps. Eastman caught up by Bearstow. Big height advantage there for Utah State. Finally, he's able to dish it over to Bickham. Hands back over to Eastman. Eastman trying to drive in the lane, nearly travels. Turnaround jumper, up and good. 96-56, 45 seconds left to go in the game. 27 seconds left, Aggies can milk some clock here. Bearstow comes around a screen over to Anderson. Looks at the three, gives it to Group Fom. Group Fom puts the right hand up and can't get it to go, but he will go to the free throw line. Roche Group Fom, who's got a bucket on the night tonight, will shoot a couple free throws. Yeah, that's be good to see uh, see him from the line. 
you get a chance to uh, watch his ball go through the hoop a couple times. Yeah. Big old knee brace on the right knee. Free throw is up by Groot Fahm and nice form. Knocks yeah, it down. Yeah, it looks great. I mean, I, again, there's um, you know, there's some skills there that we just really haven't seen yet. Um, and, uh, you know, as, as he gets a little more comfortable and, and gets these game reps, I think we're going to see some, uh, some improvement. Rebound goes off the back of the iron. And Eastman with the ball. 97-56, 41-point game. Eastman spins into lane. Bickham has the shot, won't go. Clay Stahl pulls down the rebound. Craig Smith says, no more offense. Hold that ball and let's be done with this one. Final score in this one's going to be 97 to 56 as the Aggies play keep away for about 10 more seconds. Anderson with the ball over to Brock Miller, who had 27 points tonight, a career high for the young man. 2 1 0, there's your horn, and the Aggies get the W tonight. Final score from Logan, the Aggies knock.